I'm going to now test out the uh, Featherlight product from uh, Smooth On. Uh, it is pretty light, just in the can. It feels like it's lighter than water, which is what they insist the mixed uh, product is. And uh, they do insist to stir well both cans you know, individually before using. And I'm also going to test out uh, some uh, orange tint. I hope you can still hear me over the compressor. Uh, it'll go away shortly. And this is highly concentrated, and it says to put it into part B and mix thoroughly before introducing part A. So I'll put uh, two or three drops in. Uh, a quick note, uh, something I learned from doing this mold, the urethane rubber here was able to wick up into the threads of this bolt. And this time I'm going to put a piece of tape over it. Any tape should work. This is just painter's tape. It's what I had uh, quickly available to me. Probably a uh, clear tape would be best. That way the final product, you don't look in there and see a blue hole. You just see the bottom. But I've reconstructed my mold. May not be able to see it very well, but I do have my uh, weather, or sorry, window gasket, this uh, caulking I've worked in underneath. That should be in the previous video. And so hopefully I won't have nearly as much of a mess. But that's about that. This is going to harden to a much more firm uh, end product. This is 80 on the Shore A scale, and this is, I believe, Shore D 60 something or other, something about there. Um, Shore D hardness of 58, and the Shore A and the Shore D are offset by a considerable amount. I think Shore D 20 is about equivalent to the Shore A 100 roundabout, so and they're significantly different. And it's still pretty soft. They indicate they use this for making molds of doll heads. So, without any more further ado, I'm going to mix these up without shaking it this time. And perhaps I'll have better results. Which is this? This is part B, which I'm supposed to mix. Pigment into part B. Interesting. Got a white color to it. it looks pretty firm. Curious. In fact, it's very firm. Kind of fluffy. See any point in mixing this? Because I say to stir it. That's not the screwdriver I want to use. Oh, there we go. Yeah, definitely want to mix this. A little over halfway down, I found a clear liquid floating beneath the surface of this uh, fluffy top. That's more resembling something I would have expected. Scrape all of that off of the top edge of the can here.
Now I'm just going to wager to guess that this white stuff is that particulate filler and it has separated from the uh, liquid chemical of part B. So it would be incredibly imperative to make sure this is well mixed. Clear liquid on the table. I don't know what that was from. Can't make a mess. What can you do? So now let's that's better. Just for good measure, I'm going to label this lid A. A little bit of it crusted out on the edge. Can't imagine that'd be good. Well, how about that? I have a similar light powder. And it just looks almost like uh, whipped cream or Cool Whip. Not Cool Whip, whipped cream. Miracle Whip, there we go. This is probably a bad idea. Let's see, this is just crusty dryness, but then beneath a certain level is a very thin liquid. Kind of breaking that up. Interesting. And as far as the notion of getting an existing uh, non-filled resin or urethane, rubber or plastic or whatever, and then using your own filler material. That's going to involve a fair amount of experimentation, and I'm sure you can consult with the uh, uh, manufacturer to do that. But frankly, this is about the same price 
per volume. Still a fraction of the weight. But I'm not having to buy yet another component to add into it. And I'm not having to experiment too much with the basic characteristics of the material. So yeah, I could get some filler material and I could probably make it happen. I'm I'm pretty adaptable. I'm inventive. I can make that. But really? Is it worth the effort? And is your consistency going to be there? really trying to make a mess of this one. Alright.